just a normal family. A little awkward, sometimes weird, loud and crazy. Wait, did I say normal? Oops, my bad. Stick around. Get to know us. We have Cheyenne and Tyreek. This is Savannah. I'm Michelle. And this is The Shell Bill Life. Hey guys, Michelle here. Welcome back to my channel. I am no longer a dental assisting instructor. That choice was made by my own. So this video is gonna be a combination of sit down video and then I'm gonna put in some footage from my last week at work. My, well, when I gave my notice. I'm gonna try to make it not that long. So yes, I did give my notice and watch the video. Got my letter right there, and no, I didn't type it out or anything like that. I just wrote it on regular paper. Um, usually that's what I do. If they don't like it, then I'm kind of like too bad. I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but this is just how I always give my notice letter. I am at home now, and I did give my notice, and they are not very happy because we are short instructors and um, my last day is on December 6th and they asked me can I give them another week three weeks I said no I start my new job on December 9th okay well can I get two and a half weeks no I start my new position December 9th two weeks is all you're getting that's it that's all so now I can pretty much show you guys everything that's in here I'm not breaking any HIPAA laws this is the faculty lounge right here this is where my desk is that's where the printer is and the only reason why I'm not going to show you the board is because it has the instructors names on it so um, yeah this is one of my last days here you guys so now that the cats out of the bag I can show you guys my place of employment So today is going to be my last day. I was going to make it tomorrow, which is December 6th, but I decided to do today um, <clears throat> because the instructor that is going to be taking over my classes, the new week starts tomorrow, even though that's weird, it's a Friday. So she just wants to start fresh with the students. So I'm like, you know what, instead of me just sitting there and listening to her lecture all day or her teach, um, I'll just stay home. So that's what I'm going to do. So I know I told you guys, cause the cat's out the bag, I was letting you guys see everything. So these are my keys and it just says UEI college. And this is what I take every day to work. This is what's separate than on my keys, but I will turn in my keys today. And I had to be really careful not to show you guys this. Usually I wear it in my pocket or around my neck. So when I vlogged, I had to take it off my neck because I didn't want to let everyone know where I worked for safety reasons, but I'm not there anymore, apparently. Well, I am today, but when you guys see this video, I will no longer be there. And I'm not bashing the school or anything like that. I will give you a full in-depth detail of what I thought about the whole situation and everything so you guys can know the reason why I'm leaving. So guys, I never bring my purse anymore to work. I will explain that. This little setup right here. I bring my ID card and my ATM card if I'm going to use it that day and like my, just things that I need when I'm at work. Because I have to carry my RDA license with me. And then I have all this in my pocket. I don't bring my purse to work. And I will let you guys know why. It's been a good run. It's been fun. It's been rewarding. But I gotta go. Alright. So last day, last morning walking in. I better get inside so I can clock in. And hopefully I can show more footage today than I have been.
So I am clearing out my desk. Can you guys see me? Yep. And putting the final grades in for the week. And then whoever else is taking over will continue that. Save. Okay. All right. I better get to class. I'm so sad, y'all. Kinda. So I'm not even done yet, and the dental assistant instructors, the scavengers, <laughs> raided my desk. It's okay. Goodbye, classroom. It's been a nice experience. So I'm leaving the college for the last time. I am done. So for a going away gift, one of the instructors gave me this right here, coffee mug and coffee right there and a little grater for the cinnamon. And then a little glass bear and then I won't open this up but um, a card that just says thank you and goodbye and all of the students signed it so yeah that's my parting oh, oh. gift so now that you guys have seen the process of me ending my career as a dental ins assistant instructor and I've always told you guys that that wasn't going to be my permanent job position and even though I didn't think it was going to end as soon because I actually enjoyed it. No, I did not get fired. But I will tell you guys the whole reason why I chose to leave. I was actually kind of sad because I was enjoying my position. It was new, it was fun, I got to teach and I overcame my fears. I was actually good at it. I will be able to tell you now the college that I worked at is UEI College. And I'm telling you guys this now because I'm no longer there. I don't even live in the area that the college is, so there you go. I work there and it's kind of like Carrington and what other trade school? It's a trade school, basically that's what it is. I had never heard of this school before, before they called me. And when I did, I researched and I'm like, they've been around 40 years, but they're new here to Sacramento. There's UEI colleges all over the state, Stockton, there are several in the LA area. So they're sprinkled around, you know, the United States, I think, I'm pretty sure. I did research, well, I didn't do too much research, but the research I did on the company, I didn't want to start with a beginning school and then in like a year, you know, the school shut down or anything like that. I ended up leaving before I was even there six months, but that was my choice. I'll explain to you why in this video. Got hired. I was debating whether or not I was going to take the position because when I applied for the position, I thought it was a full-time position. So I get there in the interview and the guy who interviewed me told me, no, it's only part-time. He only can offer me four and a half hours a day. And at that point I told him, I said, no, I have a mortgage. I have a car. I have a life. I can't live unless you're paying me 60 to a hundred bucks an hour. There's no way I'm going to survive on four and a half hours a day on what they're offering. And they were offering a decent wage, but come on, four and a half hours. So he talked to somebody, I don't know, whatever. He said, okay, I can guarantee you six hours a day. He said, however, because he's seen the look on my face, I was like, no, because I'm going in expecting this position to be full time, which is eight hours a day, right? He seen the look on my face that I was giving him and he said, but he said, I can guarantee you six hours. However, as the school grows, because the school is new in that area, you'll be next in line. I can offer you full time. Along with full time comes along benefits because he said, I can't offer you benefits right now. Mind you, I was younger. I got wonderful. I've had a lot of good dental positions. I mainly stayed in private practice and with private practice, the doctor pretty much controls everything. So I'm sure there's some private practices out there where the doctor pays for the retirement, full on medical dental benefits. I'm sure there's some out there. I haven't worked for any like that. I've worked for offices where you had a 401k, but you had to put it in your own. The doctor didn't match it. You got dental, but you didn't get medical. So when I was younger, I was mainly focused on having a life, being able to survive. I've been a single parent for a long time, taking my kids on vacations every year to Disneyland, doing stuff like that. That was my main goal. Come on. I was in my 20s when I had my kids, so I was young. I wasn't thinking ahead. I wasn't thinking of my future. I wasn't thinking of buying a house at the time. I was not thinking of retirement and things that I need to save for. Fast forward years later, here I am now, and I'm at the point to where I've had wonderful jobs. I have good paying jobs, thank God, but I need to start thinking of my future because my kids are getting older and they're gonna be gone and who knows when or if I'm going to get married or anything like that. So I have to start thinking about me and my future and 
being able to take care of myself. I don't want to work until I pass out dead because I don't have a retirement. That's where my mindset is now. He told me, he said, as the school grows, because they've been open since February this year, and it's getting bigger, but getting bigger slowly. But he told me, he said, nope, I promise you, you'll be next in line. So we all know I accepted the position. The money's decent. I did take a pay cut because I'm working less hours, but I'm like, I'm doing what I love. I got out of a horrible situation where at Dr. Gray's office, they didn't want me there. I told you guys a story about that. So I'm working, I'm actually happy. The only complaints I ever had about that place was the director of the dental department. She would call and text at night, send pictures and whatever, and it's like, girl, I am not at work. You know, after a while, I'm like, you know, I just stopped answering her at night because I'm like, I'm at home, I'm not on the clock, quit. And these are very lengthy texts. I mean, you guys know, if you guys been watching me a long time, you guys know that when I was at my office before with the big boss, that's what I used to call him, he would text us at night constantly. The office manager there, she would text us at night about stupid things that could wait until the next day. So you guys know how I feel about that. This is super important. If I'm off the clock, don't text, don't call me. So she had a bad habit of that. So that's the only thing I can say I complained of. The students, okay, let me tell you a little bit about the college. So what I didn't know until I got in there because when I went through the onboarding process, they were saying, oh, these students are rough, they're ghetto, they're this, they're that, and I'm like, you know, this is this is a trade school. I went to a trade school for dental 20 some odd years ago. And when I went, people were going there to trade in and out, didn't want to go to full college, whatever the reason may be. But you know, it wasn't ghetto or anything like that. Well, then I did more research. UEI colleges, all UEI colleges across wherever they are, are put in what's called targeted areas. Targeted areas are areas of lower income, where they're trying to make the area better and provide this. They say they're helping out the people that live in the area, but the school is not any cheaper. I'm not trying to bash the school. Their intentions are good, but a lot of times they let in riffraffs. A lot of times Carrington, uh, which used to be Western Career College for people who heard that little jingle, Western Career College, you can do it. You know, stuff like that or other trade schools. They wouldn't put up with things that this college just puts up with. I mean, there have been fights where cops have to be called. On the medical assisting side, one girl showed a picture of her baby to another girl. She called her baby a monkey, and then a fist fight broke out. I mean, this is the kind of stuff we dealt with on a regular basis. These students, and not all of the students were that way, because some of the students really did come from good homes, came there to get a career, start their life, right out of high school, you know, they didn't want to go the full college route, whatever. Whatever the reason they were there, everyone that's there are ghetto or like that. So I want to put that out there in case they ever come across this video. If I could tell you some of the stories that happened at UEI College, you'd be surprised. The students that are there, a lot of them come from really hard backgrounds. One girl was facing four years in prison for some kind of felony. Two guys that were in a class together had, one had a restraining order against the other, but they were both in the same class. And that wasn't my class. I don't know how they dealt with that. One girl told us that, and I'm not giving away any names or any hints. I'm not breaking any HIPAA violations or anything like that. But one girl was walking home to get on the bus from UEI College, and she was kidnapped, thrown in the trunk. And the only reason why the guy let her out is because he got a phone call from his mom, not from his mom, but he got a phone call about his mom. His mom had gotten a car accident, so he pulled over and let her out. These stories of these students that go there, they have a really hard background. So I didn't know this going in, and before I actually had my own class, the other teachers kind of scared me because they're like, this and that, you gotta go in, you gotta be hard, you gotta be mean, you gotta be rude, and whatever. And I didn't go in on that route, I mean, I went in with my personality and I'm more reserved, but I think in the end, the students had more respect for me because I did hear of them and before. Now that's how an instructor should speak to a student. When the other instructors come in and they all rude and you know, do this, do that, whatever. So that was my approach to it. Anyway, I peeped game very early on. I asked the instructors, I'm like, where where do you keep your purse? Yes, my cubicle, I was able to lock it up in there, but they're like, you know what area we work in? We don't bring our purse. 
So I stopped bringing my purse, so that's the reason why you guys see in the video, I showed you the keys that I bring and just the stuff that I put in my pocket on a daily basis because, I mean, granted, anything can happen anywhere, but for an area that's known for high crime and stuff like that, yeah, I don't wanna be lugging my Michael Kors purses people thinking I got a lot of money and I don't. So speaking of money, there's some things that shouldn't be discussed to me on social media. Not everything's for social media. I think I told you guys that before. Yes, I share my life with you guys, but I don't share everything. I have respect for people who don't wanna be on the camera. Like my mom, I told her I said, I would never show you on camera. And so I don't, I have that respect for her. Cheyenne, a lot of times she does not like to be on the video, so I don't show her. Savannah, if I'm vlogging and I'll look at her, she'll shake her head no, and she won't be in a video. So yeah, I do share a lot with you guys, but I don't share everything. And no, everything's not all hunky-dory and butterflies and unicorns and rainbows and whatever you want to call it. Everything's not always perfect, but some things I don't show because out of respect to my children, it's not my place to show it or whatever. I don't know how I got up on that tangent. Oh, we're talking about money. So anyway, certain things should not be shared on social media within your personal life. And I think money is one of it. So I don't really share my financial situation. I've been blessed. I'm not rich, apparently. I'm not, you know, traveling the world on a yacht or in all these fancy planes or whatever. I have a decent life and I'm thankful, but I'm not rich. That's gonna come into play. So I remember saying about the money. So working at the college, things are going fine. And I'm talking to an instructor one day because they told us they were gonna be doing cutbacks on hours and make sure you don't clock in before a certain time and make sure when it's time for you to clock out, you clock out right then and there. No overtime. And I'm thinking, I'm like, why are they being so strict? And we're just talking about it. And I said, well, so-and-so, the guy who hired me, I said, he told me that once the school gets bigger, I was next in line to get full-time hours and then I would get benefits with that. And I see her just look like this and she got a really look, weird look on her face and I'm like, what? And she said, girl, he told me the same thing. What? Okay, so she was hired after me. He told her the same thing. So come to find out, the person that was hired half after her, he told her the same exact thing. So we were totally lied to because I talked to the director and she said, no, she said, the school only wants to pay for the director over whatever department. So director over the dental. That's the only person who had full-time hours and who was eligible for overtime if necessary. And that's the person who had benefits. They did not want to give benefits to any of the other just regular instructors. And that's the way it was at UEI colleges across the board. And that's just how it was. And I'm like, so I'm never going to get full-time hours or full-time benefits. No. And I'm like, so I was lied to because they are short on instructors. Nobody wants to work there because of this reason and because it's in the ghetto and because the students, half of them are off their rocker. One thing about the school, which it is a negative thing to me, all they're concerned with is numbers. We have a daily meeting every day called a stand-up meeting and it's the stupidest thing in the world. Oh, how many students do you have? Oh, how many aren't here? Did you call them? Okay, make sure you call, I mean, Okay, I get it, but these are adults. All these students are 18 and over. If they choose not to show and screw up their career and whatnot and mess up their grades, that's on them. I don't remember getting calls from college. Even when I went to Sac City College, I don't remember getting calls when I missed here and there from the instructor, but they wanted us to do this on a daily basis. And it was so, to me, it was so repetitive, so redundant every day. Oh, how many students do you have? I was just in here yesterday. I told you 14. You know I have 14. Oh, how many? I mean, it was just the whole thing was stupid. So all they were concerned about is that, and I get it, if the students aren't there, that means that really we're not getting paid. So I get that part of it, but all they were concerned about is numbers. I felt that I was lied to to get in there. In addition to that, they are going to start making us cut down hours to four and a half hours. And I'm like, so we're back to the point where I said I couldn't accept the position. You're gonna try to make me, you know, do that. Always get something in writing. I started thinking of this and I'm like, you know what? I should have had him give me something in writing that stated everything he just said because then he couldn't have got out of it. I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, if I go to four and a half hours on this, what they're paying me, which is like I said, it's a good number, but four and a half hours is not going to cut it. How am I going to live? So 
all of you guys know my kids are older 18 20 and 23 have to think about that so when Savannah turned 18 in October I lost a significant amount of money that I was getting every month from child support and so I've been having to live my life on my income which I can do that right but not if I'm trying to work four and a half hours and then not have that income. I gotta get out before they start enforcing that four and a half hour rule. I'm like, you know what, I, I I just can't. So that's why I looked for another job and thankfully I found one pretty quick. Still in the dental field, it's in corporate. Now normally, I think I told you guys before, I like working for private practices because I feel they're more conservative when it comes to the dental work but I'm not actually in a dental office. Let me explain. So it's a corporation. I'm on the billing side, so I don't have a doctor to deal with. I don't have patients to deal with. I take that back. I will have to deal with calls sometime here and there for patients, but it's not a call center, but I'm a biller. They have wonderful benefits in retirement and stuff like that. Medical, dental, I am here for now. This may be my forever job, you guys. I've been there five days now. Um, it's been a week. And so far, so good. I know everything that's going on, you know, but I'm just having to learn the dental system. Other than that, I know how to post checks. I know how to verify insurances. I know what I'm doing. I just need to learn the system. So yeah, you guys, that's the reason why I am no longer a dental assistant instructor. And like I said, I was kind of sad because I was actually enjoying it and thinking that I was going to be there until I got a job with the state or Kaiser because I told you guys that's where I wanted to be someplace where they had wonderful benefits and I'm still in my resumes out there for a state job because that's I don't know that's just what I want to do but who knows you guys maybe I will be happy here they have good benefits and have this be my forever job I said all this to say my whole thing in life is trying to get to a place to where I have good benefits because like I said, I don't want to work until I pass out. So yeah, kind of sad. And it was funny because it's August. I haven't been working eight hours a day. And so on Monday when I went in, I was like, Woo, how do people do this? Eight hours? Just joking. But I had been working anywhere from six to six and a half hours a day from August. So I had got used to those hours. So that's the reason why sometimes you guys would see me home and the sun was out or I'd be like, oh, it's 3.30 and I'm showered and I'm at home and I'm vlogging or whatever. That's the reason why, because it was considered a part-time position. But I took it because I did have the extra income and I was promised that within the end of the year, to six months of me being employed, I was going to be full-time hours with full-time benefits. So yeah, you guys, I was lied to. And you know, when I left, I didn't have any hard feelings. I gave my notice and I went in every day and I still did everything that I was supposed to do. The students, a lot of the students were sad to see me go. And on the last day, a lot of them, especially my first group of students that I taught, they will always have my heart, just always will. One guy just held on to me and was like, oh, Miss Rogers, I'm gonna miss you. Thank you so much for everything you taught me. And I'm like leaning back to go out of the hug. He's still holding me tight. So I feel that I did make a good dental assistant instructor and I did make a difference in these kids' life, you know? So yeah, you guys, I had a very short but sweet teaching career. Like I said, I knew it wasn't gonna be forever. I didn't expect it to end this soon, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. I gotta do what's best for me. And yes, I'm able to live on my income that they're paying me at my job right now. It's eight hours, it's full time. And I think it's in six months, I will get benefits. Every company is different. So in six months, my benefits will start. That way I can get my 401 and all that good stuff like that. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.